Uh, what's going on in the database industry is, is pretty simple if you actually step through it. We're going through a generational shift in the database. In order to look at why we're going through a generational shift in the database, you have to look all the way back to the IBM era. I can tell that some of you in the audience are you know, from that era, some of you are not. But if you think about why did, why did people move off the IBM mainframe in the day? You know, 30, 40 years ago, mainframes dominated. They didn't really ever go away. They just dominated the time that something new came along. And the thing that was happening in the mainframe world is that from an application perspective and from a user perspective, the database became too restrictive. If you were a user of IT services at a typical corporation back in the 80s and even into the early 90s in some cases, you went to IT and you asked IT to build you something, the typical answer you got was a very simple, give me five years and give me five million dollars and you too can have that capability for your operation. And so that left the door open. You know, five million dollars, a lot of money, five years of time, a lot of time, that left the door open for what I refer to as the Oracle era. And Oracle simply being the, the company that dominated the relational era. And, th and that's what opened the door for it. What did it do? It gave the capability of compute capacity and compute power to departments. But if you remember, what people started doing is they started sticking them under their desks, they were down the hall, they were very departmentalized servers. But what changed in the market was this notion of you could get access to data and you could build applications more quickly. And so that became the era that we've now been in for almost 30 years. You know, by the way, when I joined Oracle, it was you know, the mid-80s, Oracle about the size of logic is today. For those of you that are just coming in and you look at the billions of dollars in revenue you generate, hard to imagine Oracle ever being that size. But that, that was the wedge that Oracle put into IBM's market, was this idea that, hey, it takes too long to build things and it's too expensive. Well, guess what's happened when we've moved forward? All the data types have changed. We have all kinds of other data besides tabular data, which is what relational was really good for. The data fit neatly into rows and columns. The world back then was pretty homogeneous. You're generally building applications with the data that resided in your operation. You gotta think back, put your, put your clock on and turn it back in time. Social media data didn't exist. External data sources didn't exist. Open gov type databases didn't exist. And generally speaking, companies were simply trying to get their arms around traditional compute environments, i.e. marketing systems, HR systems, general ledgers, manufacturing systems. So the application definition of what was needed was a more agile definition, but for very, very homogeneous data and very structured data. Well, if we roll the clock forward to today, What's the answer that a typical Oracle DBA gives when he's asked to build a new application? Five years and five million dollars. We're back to the same thing. The difference is it's around heterogeneous data. And it's around heterogeneous data in many different respects from heterogeneous. Different by data type, so structured and unstructured data types. Heterogeneous by database vendor. Oracle, yeah, they sort of dominated, but there's a lot of Sybase, there's a lot of Informix, there's a lot of Ingress. A lot of mainframe data still, and it turns out the relational model isn't very good at dealing with heterogeneous data from vendor or from data type. And then also you have the difference between structured and unstructured data. 80% of the world's data today is unstructured, and we're trying to manage it in a product in a product today that was designed and built to manage structured data, not unstructured data. But typically, you don't want to just look at, and this is where people get really confused, you don't want to just look at products that just do structured data, unstructured data. You want to look at a product that can do the heterogeneous nature of structured and unstructured and how those come together. And that's where the unique qualities of Mark Logic come in, is we can deal with all your data in Mark Logic, and we do it without a schema. We do it without the Achilles heel of the relational era, which is the schema, it's upfront data modeling. The reason it takes so long to use an Oracle database today to solve most problems is because you have to know the exact definition of all the data coming in, and you have to know the exact questions you want to ask of the data. So if you think about what happens in an Oracle world, if I don't know all the data sources coming in, what happens every time a data source changes? I have to go rewrite the schema. What happens every time you want to ask a different question of the data? I have to rewrite all the SQL statements. Well, if I rewrite all the SQL statements, 
what do I have to do? I rewrite them to use the new columns I've added, but then I have to re-index them, re-index the database, and then occasionally I have to just rebuild it because it gets horribly fragmented. So we get into this endless loop. So if you're like some of our customers, you know, one of our customers bringing together 28 different trading systems for a single view of trading data for post-trade processing, they spent two and a half years trying to do it in Oracle. But what was happening? Every time the data changed, one of the 28 trading systems changed, they had to rewrite their ETL layer, their translation layer. What happened every time the SEC or an international regulatory body came to them and asked them a different question? They had to rewrite the application again. So two and a half years into building that application, it wasn't even running. They were still not able to get production. We went in, five months we had the first iteration of in production. They had about three trading systems quarter. Healthcare.gov, very similar. They tried to build healthcare.gov for Obamacare in the Oracle database. They spent two and a half, almost three years of a lot of window of time before the mandated production date two years ago. Didn't have anything to show for it. Roughly a year before that went live, they switched the database and they switched the data services hub to MarkLogic. We made the go live date. And we scaled up. And so when we talk about scaling massive scale, we supported 80,000 concurrent users on that system at the peak, and we supported 160,000 requests per minute coming through the database. So massive scale and scale out hardware, order of magnitude reduction in costs, and an order of magnitude reduction in the time of results by switching to a new generation of database. So as soon as you can drive that order of magnitude shift, just like we moved from IBM to the Oracle era, we can move from the Oracle era to the NoSQL era. 